بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين Dear brothers and sisters Our dear viewers of the قناة القرآن We are Professor Belghith Mohammed on me Professor Rashid Mimouni We are happy to engage with you with this program entitled Towards a Civilized World uh, First of all uh, we thank the responsibles of this uh, channel, Qanat Quran, to give us the opportunity to treat, tackle relevant themes about civilization in a globalized world with its challenges and the place of values in it. And also, we have, we should also mention and acclaim the strong and courageous decision by the higher authorities in the Algerian state to promote the English language as a foreign language at all levels, all the levels, and the accompanying measures to teach English language at the third year primary uh, school level. Professor uh, Belrif, uh, would you uh, elaborate maybe on the notion or the synopsis about what we mean by uh, towards a civilized world? <coughs> Marhaba. Thank you. Praise is due to Allah Ta'ala, the most gracious and the most merciful. Peace and blessings upon our beloved Salam Prophet, his family and companions. Uh, first of all, we uh, thank Allah the Almighty Allah for uh, giving us uh, this new opportunity uh, to elaborate on uh, different themes in this program. <laughs> Secondly, we thank, of course, the authorities uh, of this uh, country and this channel for uh, uh, setting up a new, uh, new program uh, in English, uh, to uh, help the audience all over the world to understand better, to a better understanding of uh, different themes and topics related with civilization and the meaning of civilization, right? Because maybe some uh, of us might uh, confuse between civilization, progress, and uh, development also. And actually, what, it, what does it mean to be civilized in, the, in this world, especially with a uh, globalized world, right? <clears throat> what is the place of values all in this uh, uh, view, new view? And I think we have our own view, right? to uh, uh, clarify it and to exhibit it to the world. Hopefully we will be uh, uh, competent enough to explain better what does it mean to be civilized and how can we become civilized, live with the, this world uh, uh, in same time respecting our values and our traditions and our culture uh, and our ethics, actually, inshallah, we, with the help of Allah, we hope that it will be successful. Inshallah. We have chosen as a title today to speak about, the, about sport and ethics. Yes. Why? Because there is a worldwide element, uh, event today's, today, which is, the, which is the soccer, football, or football yeah. uh, world the cup in uh, Qatar yes. uh, and uh, we know that uh, this is related also with globalizations yes. that is captivating the attention all of the world is all different then it's just a game what should be our behavior what can we propose to our viewers we are <coughs> going to give an analysis a historical uh, short historical uh, uh, point 
on propose the ethics of sports, what does it mean, ethics and so on. I should mention before that, that the ethics of sports uh, has started uh, in, uh, in Europe, yeah, in the sports, even in football, we know that the original uh, country which uh, uh, hosted football is England. But as Norbert Elias, an anthropologist, English anthropologist, has said, uh, he said that uh, sports and football particularly and other games, cricket, boxing in England, started by the, as a leisure by the nobility. يعني الترفيه بالنسبة للنبلاء طبقة النبلاء أنذاك ثم تحولت إلى قوانين فيما بعد عندما انتشرت when, when it, it, it spread among popular classes middle class and popular classes and what he mentions it's very important he said not only يعني, there were rules at that time which uh, there are also <laughs> morals values values of respect ethics which were, was in the nobility. <coughs> then when we are speaking about sport, we are not speaking just about practice of sport. There is ethics. Professor yes. Belrith. <coughs> I, I think, uh, Professor, even uh, your uh, uh, introduction is very important because to understand the present of something or the future of something, mm. we need this uh, uh, historical uh, overview mm. but actually uh, regardless of uh, this historical uh, background uh, in sport uh, according to our culture our reference and our teachings uh, sport is is uh, a very important uh, practice in our life it should be, it should take an important uh, time in our schedules, uh, I mean as a Muslims, since our uh, uh, religion encourages us to practice sport. If we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has taught us to practice at least three sports, mm -hmm. right? Uh, swimming, right? Uh, uh, training uh, in in uh, uh, i mean shooting uh, or playing uh, horse uh, climbing etc so uh, sport I in islam uh, is very important depending on the objective of the sport that's it here maybe we might uh, have a special special characteristic different from maybe many people in the world. We practice sport, first of all, to strengthen our bodies. Our Prophet said, Al-Mu'minu al-Qawiyyu khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al-Mu'min al-Da'if. A strong believer is better, khayrun, and maybe closer to Allah, better than the weak Muslim. Here, strength and weakness doesn't mean only in religious uh, worship or in religiosity, but also in, in the physical side. Since Islam uh, educates the Muslim, prepares the Muslim uh, with a balanced growth, intellectually, physically, and spiritually, as we are asked to grow uh, uh, intellectually and spiritually, we are also asked to grow physically and to take care of our bodies and our health, right? When uh, the Holy Quran says, uh, Eat and drink without uh, wastage, right? In the Surah of Al-A'raf. That means it, it teaches us to take care of our health because a healthy Muslim is better than an unhealthy Muslim or one who neglects his uh, health, right? So that's why pr sport is related with this objective, to strengthen our bodies, because more we become stronger, more we are able to worship Allah 
properly and to, to defend our values and our teachings and our culture and our countries, uh, our sacred beliefs. And uh, if we become weaker, that's why uh, Islam teaches us to avoid anything which weakens our health, like smoking, like uh, uh, dr drug, uh, drug uh, addiction and so on. So I think uh, practicing sport is related with the objective, which is strengthening, strengthening our bodies and taking care of our health uh, and uh, becoming a strong Muslims because a strong Muslim is better in the sight of Allah better than a weak uh, Muslim, I think. This is as an introduction to this uh, very important issue. Then we can see also that uh, in Islam, there is a parallelism in the values uh, uh, between uh, sport values and Islamic values. Yes. But we have to say that uh, when we are speaking about ethics, I just mentioned one fact. It is about uh, that sport has played in Algeria an important role in the national consciousness in Algeria. Uh, during the colonization, yes. there were cultural associations and the sport has an important uh, part since particularly 1920s when there were parties on associations like Jamaat al-Ulama, Wal uh, al Islamiya, the Scottish movement, were encouraged theater in the cultural on sports, particularly boxing and football at the time. We know that the cycles names uh, about uh, football teams were Mouloudia, Mouloudia, uh, in appraisal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, birth, and the uh, associated or uh, of Union, Muslim Union, Union Musulmane du Sport. The turning point was the, at the Liberation War when the constitution of the national football team, Fariq al-Watani al-Jazairi, where f professionals <coughs> when in their colonization from French club deserted their clubs, their clubs and joined the team of the Algerian uh, revolution at that time. This is the first thing. After independence, also there, is, there are other things. And this is important that to show that uh, sports <coughs> is playing a social role. It, uh, it, 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 it helps to structure identity on, th on, on things like that. Uh, what is uh, maybe the ethics? I will give, uh, because uh, the values, there are specific values related with sports, uh, and uh, it is uh, found in the charter of Olympic charter, there are ethics. Football charters, clubs, there are ethics. There are specific values we could mention. Hello, it's. Uh, principles uh, that are, uh, have to be uh, developed in the, ed in the ed educational uh, yani, uh, clubs, football clubs, must be schools of education. It was that in Algeria in the 70s. There were, we had in the past decades, schools of football, which were a model of education. Okay, and what are the values? The Sikh, some of their values, the Sikh, for new challenges, a tahadi, a tahadi. Uh, open to everybody. There is no discrimination, should be no discrimination in sports. Equal treatment of competition, yani equity, uh, uncertainty of results. We should not use uh, inappropriate ways to have the results in favor of a club or another. Result. There is no bribery or something like that or corruption. On fair play, fair play, uh, equitable, honest, without treachery, violence, respect of rules of the other adversaries and competitors and so forth. What would you uh, yeah, mention? I, I uh, think uh, what I get from your uh, message, uh, Prof, mm. uh, there, is a, there is a difference between uh, practicing something uh, individually, Prof, and practicing it with other people, with the yeah. others, collectively, yeah. right? Uh, when you practice something with the others, there should be rules. 
mm. and regulations That's it, yeah. to avoid to harm anyone. Mm. But when you practice something in individually, any sport you practice individually, uh, you are free to practice it either uh, at home or uh, in a stadium or in the field or whatsoever. But when you practice it with uh, collectivity, uh, with uh, I mean collectively, you should it should be organized, organized with rules and regulations and laws. This is the first thing. Second thing, uh, in the beginning, uh, sports, any sport, especially football, was just uh, an entertainment game. Mm -hmm. But I think lately sport has been politicized. I mean misused uh, for political uh, goals and objectives. That's why it became, it, it, it became, uh, uh, I mean, used uh, to maybe to gain certain, certain uh, positions or certain statues all over the world. And we see differences growing between nations and between countries. Uh, uh, third, thirdly, also, which is also important, uh, I think Muslim scholars, uh, when they discuss the issues of sports and games, they mention that uh, uh, normally some scholars uh, prohibit uh, practicing uh, a sport if it is related with violence. Mm -hmm. Violence. That's why some Muslim scholars uh, may be uh, um, did not agree uh, for for example for boxing since the boxer the player uh, i mean uh, beats his adversary in in the face we know that in islam uh, even in the sacred war you do not have the right to to beat somebody in his face mm -hmm. f uh, f face f the face of a, a person is a honorable place uh, of his body, the most honor honored place. That's why in Islam we don't beat even uh, our enemies in, in their faces. Maybe many people do not know this. Mm. That's why some scholars discuss the issue of uh, boxing, for example, uh, since it, it, it is used with a very, very violent way, right? So, uh, I mean, they took in consideration the problem, the issue of uh, ethics, right? As you, you have mentioned, that uh, sport you practice collectively should have regulations and rules, like avoiding to cheat or to use bribery or to, to uh, maybe uh, try to uh, practice certain ways to get a better result or to win, for example, uh, the party or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we, we know. Even we practice sport I, in Islam, even you are in, in, in a program of an entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, there are things you should behave nicely uh, in them, as the Prophet said, and behave with people kindly or nicely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, maybe uh, we can uh, mention some of the values. We will uh, stress or focus upon what we are calling fair play. Even in, in other languages, we maintain the English yes. word. Al-Lab yes. sharif What does it mean, Al-Lab sharif It's a complex concept by the specialist. It embodies a number of fundamental values which are parallel to values of Islam, if we can say. Fair competition, yani al-lab sharif wa munafas sharifa Respect, respect. Friendship, it doesn't exclude friendship. Yani team spirit, team spirit. Al-lab al-jama'i, al-lab al-jama'i, l'esprit, yani, uh, yani, team, al-lab al-jama'i. Sports without doping, now they are, yani, as you mentioned, uh, you mentioned, for example, to improve uh, the uh, capacity of the of the of the, sp the playing uh, football, for example, he used doping, and it is forbidden. 
It is forbidden. Uh, respect for, uh, for written and unwritten rules, such as integrity, solidarity, tolerance, care, excellent tolerance is uh, 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 a tasamuh on the game. And uh, we see that respect of others, they are very important themes. And we have that in our country, in the Muslim countries in Algeria, we have to make those values overcome over the bad practices, violence in the stadium. It's not, uh, they are in all, it's a world, uh, a world um, ill practice, violence by supporters. We see that they are, they are people, they are using the supporters, they are fanatizing the supporters in order that they commit violence. And it is the spirit of sport is completely broken down. We need what we maybe call an innovative education to make those values uh, 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 present in our field and outside the field, probably. Yes, I, I, I think. Uh here we need to remind our audience that if uh, we, we have a, an important uh, com competition, for example, like World Cup or African Cup or European Cup, Cup, for example, I think when we have a competition with different people from our culture mm -hmm. or from our beliefs, uh, I should uh, not mix between uh, political issues or uh, ideological issues. If you are different, you have your own beliefs and your own culture, I should respect that. Mm -hmm. And I should not provocate you in your beliefs or in your values, right? To use that as a provocation or to uh, try to mix between uh, political uh, issues or targets or objectives with the, the, the competition we are uh, playing together. Mm -hmm. There should be a respect between each other. As I respect you, as I respect your laws, uh, when I come to your country, or when I'm invited to your country, right, uh, or when I visit your country, mm -hmm. you should uh, know that uh, uh, we don't have to mix between, the, or I mean, uh, political background, for example, you came from, right or ideological or if you believe in something it doesn't mean that i have to force the others and to convince the other or to provocate them uh, to use my own uh, beliefs or my own uh, behavior right and to force you to follow me that's it uh, yes uh, we have to be very uh, careful in that probably uh, we have to mention another aspect yeah. is that is not it is <coughs> sports has been a worldwide uh, system yes. including many fields including politics including even economics big companies are sponsorizing clubs uh, footballers uh, players great uh, tennis men uh, great uh, sportsmen and women then this is uh, this is has the business if it enters the sports it has not to spoil the nature of sports sports there are pri priorities that's right it. Uh, rather than you misusing sports to yeah. increase uh, mm. to increase uh, conflict between people why we do not sp use mm. sport to mm. strengthen brotherhood in the world Inshallah. and tolerance that's a think Time is running out and we have to close with this. We hope that our viewers, our viewers, uh, dear brothers and sisters, ayuhal ikhwa wa al akhawat, astamta'tum, yani you have enjoyed this theme, which is very important. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.